Hello all, welcome to Ofa Studies YouTube channel. This is .NET Beginners video. So I wanted to create one video where I can cover high level what is .NET means, how to install it and how to create one small app and maybe how to refer a package inside your .NET code. Package means external code. Somebody would have written that code and you want to refer it in your program, right? So how to get started? So that is the main idea of this video. If anybody is beginner who want to understand the basic of the .NET, they can consider watching this video. So first thing is what is .NET? So .NET is actually free open source class platform development environment. So what that means? When I say free, it is actually free, no cost involved and it's a open source. What open source means? Open source means um, anybody from the external world as a community, they can contribute to development of that technology. So in this case, to develop the .NET, anybody can contribute. The entire .NET code was hosted on the GitHub repositories. People can change it, people can edit it, people can create their own contributions and they can submit PRs, pull request in the GitHub repositories. So their changes will become live if everything is good. So that is a open source. Open source means all the code is visible to everybody and people can give some suggestions or alter it or add a new code to it, okay? And class platform, what that means? It means the .NET technology will run on class platform. That means it will run on the Windows OS also, Mac also, Linux also. So .NET work in a class cross platform environment manner. Okay. So, and it is completely free. Uh, so we can, by using .NET, you can create various types of the applications. So if you want to know like what kind of applications you can use, uh, I mean, you can create, it's basically web applications, windows, mobile, cloud applications, also maybe microservices, everything you can build. You can check the same thing by going to the website of the .NET. So you can go to the browser and you can search here for .net.microsoft.com URL. So when I enter .net.microsoft.com URL here, I landed to this website and here you can see that it highlights that you can develop web applications, sorry, and you can develop mobile and desktop applications, code applications and microservices. So everything is possible via .NET technology. Now, coming back to the big question, what languages and tools one can use in .NET? In .NET, we can use c -sharp language and f -sharp language actually, not F3, it is f -sharp language. So both these languages are supported in .NET, but generally, I would recommend you to start with c -sharp language because that is object-oriented programming language uh, it is similar to any other languages like Java and Python. So it is easy to go ahead. f -sharp is functional programming. That is not scope of this video. So consider that one has to go with c -sharp language. And what tools we have to work with .NET technology? There are two tools. IDE means Integrated Development Environment. A tool which is completely integrated and giving you a development environment. So Visual Studio, you can use it or VS Code also you can use it, okay? So in this tutorial, we will go ahead with the VS Code, okay? And this we have already seen that using .NET, we can build web, mobile, desktop, cloud applications and microservices. Now, coming back to the history of the .NET, right? So previously, there is something called .NET Framework. Now, we will be calling it like .NET only. So what is the difference between framework and .NET? So generally, right, when this .NET technology came, it came with the name of .NET Framework. Up to version 4.811, it is .NET Framework only. But after that, right, with the .NET Framework 5 or 5 plus, it was renamed to .NET because .NET Framework only works on the Windows OS. But now, as I said, .NET now runs on Linux, Mac OS and Windows as well and also .NET became free and open source. So all this shift from running on Windows to the cross platform and making it free, making it open source, all these differences, right? They, when, when they adopted all these things, they renamed the brand as a .NET basically. So earlier we used to call it like .NET framework. 
then in middle they used to call it like a .NET Framework Core, but they have changed it to .NET. So now everything is .NET, not .NET Framework. So .NET Framework is something that runs on the Windows OS. That means if any application, if you created using .NET, it will run on the Windows OS only. But today, if you create any application with .NET, that will run on Mac OS as well, Linux as well, Windows as well. And as I said, .NET is open source as well. Anybody who wants to develop something new now, it is highly recommended that develop that using the .NET code only. I mean .NET technology only, not .NET framework one. Okay. So to download and install the .NET, we have to go to .NET.Microsoft.URL. So that's what now we are going to discuss how to install .NET and how to get started with the .NET. So to install .NET, we have to go to .NET.Microsoft.com URL and hit the download button there to download and install it. So let me quickly show you where it is. So if I go to the browser and when I go to .NET.Microsoft.com URL, you see there is a button called download. So when I click that download button, it will take me to the next page where I can download. Now you might be wondering why it is automatically taking me to the Windows OS download because the browser when you hit that download button it automatically senses it's a Windows OS it directly take me to the a downloader which helps to install .NET on the Windows OS. So you can hit this download .NET SDK and you can install .NET in your system. Okay, so that is the step one and it is already available in my system. Now you need a IDE, Integrated Development Environment. You need a tool where you can use this .NET technology and develop your application. So to, to download that application, you can go to code.visualstudio.com URL. That's where you can download the Visual Studio code, which is also again completely free. Uh, and as I said, in this tutorial, I will be going with the Visual Studio code. So let me navigate to this URL, code.visualstudio.com. In the browser, I am searching for code.visualstudio.com URL. Now, this is the website. From here, I can download the Visual Studio code. You see this. So when you hit this button there, you will get the Visual Studio code installer file in your local. So you can simply hit that download for Windows and it will start the downloading of the Visual Studio code. And once it download, you can double click that exe file to install the Visual Studio code in your system. Okay, so for this demo, I have already installed Visual Studio code. So I'm not going to double click that exe file to install the Visual Studio code. I have already in my system. So this is a step two. So we got Visual Studio, oh, sorry, we got uh, .NET from the .NET.Microsoft.com URL. We got IDE, that means tool, Visual Studio code from the code.visualstudio.com URL. Now let's open the Visual Studio code and the third prerequisite is there is something called C Sharp Dev Kit extension which I have to install in the Visual Studio code. That extension helped me to create the .NET projects, .NET applications in the Visual Studio code. So let me hit the start menu and let me search for VS code. When I search for VS code, I should see Visual Studio code there. Let me hit that open button to open the Visual Studio code now. Visual Studio code is open now. So now I can go to the extensions here, the first step and search for C Sharp Dev Kit extension and try to install it. So let me go to the search extensions and let me search for C Sharp Dev Kit. You see that C Sharp Dev Kit extension came here, but you don't see the install button now. But if you see install button for something else, the reason is C Sharp Dev Kit is already installed in my system. If I remove the search and when I go to the installed section here, you see that C Sharp Dev Kit installed in my system already here. Let's go to the explore button now and let's hit this create.NET project. That's where I can create a .NET project. So I am interested to create the console web application. So here, let's search for console web application. Sorry, console app. It's not a web application. It runs on the command prompt. So console app template, I have selected it. Now it will ask me select the path where you want to create this project. So I am going inside the source folder, repos folder. That's where I keep all my projects. 
so maybe let me create a new folder here and let name it like a sample console app that's the name of the app i want to give so i created a folder with that name and selecting the folder once i select the folder let me give the app name also same as the folder name and hit enter you see that it automatically opened my sample console app folder here and if i minimize that you see there are two menus outline and timeline in a while you see solution explorer menu as well that will help you to easily work with your projects similar to how you work with the projects in the visual studio you see that visual studio explorer tab came here now this view gives you the project kind of view like how the solution explorer in visual studio gives you it is the same view you get in a visual studio code as well previously this solution explorer view was not there in the visual studio code but now it is there with the c sharp dev kit it is very easy to work with the projects when you have this solution explorer view if you see this view it is like a directly folder view it will show you directly the folders subfolders and files in it but it won't see any dependencies other things here but if you see the solution explorer view you have everything the dependencies what is the actual file where you have a code let me open program.cs file and uh, let me double click this so this is our first project which we have created it now let's try to run this project how to run this project to run this project select that project here right click select that open in internal terminal sorry integrated terminal it will open a terminal inside the visual studio code only now in that terminal we can execute some kind of some commands to run this project let's type command dot net run here and let me hit enter this dot net run command actually helps you sorry so there is an error here why because right now i am in sample console app folder but i should go inside this sample console app folder as well there are two sample console app folders so basically i should have right click on this project folder and i should have opened the internal terminal here so let me right click and reopen the terminal here so this time i have right clicked on the project file actually okay now if you see the path here it actually in the same path where our project is there so this is the folder i created and it again created one more folder inside that with the project name okay so let me type dot net run command that will actually runs our console application once our console application runs it should print hello world because that is what we are we have the code there great you see that it printed hello world so that means successfully we are able to get the dot net we are able to get the visual studio code and we are able to install the c sharp dev kit extension and create a console app project in it and run that project so what i can do maybe i can change this code also a little bit so i can say here console dot write line i can say enter your name okay so i have asked that user to enter their name and then where name variable equals to i can read the input from the user using console dot read line function uh, the user enters the name and then finally i can print that name whatever user entered here so i can print in this way right so i can say your name is then in angular brackets i can use that name variable and when i'm using that interpolation syntax i should add a dollar so that this will get treat as a variable so let me save these changes and let me try to run this app once again dot net run this time it should ask me to enter the name and then when i enter the name it should print the value as well so it is asking me enter my name so now i will enter mahir basha and when i hit enter it says that your name is mahir basha so right so that is what we are so we are able to create our first project in the dot net which is uh, console app type which runs on the command prompt which runs on the terminal so now this is fine so like this you generally write the code and go ahead with your implementations based on whatever the project type is let's assume sometimes right there might be a need somebody else would have written a code uh, and it is available in a form of packages like how you have in python and other languages you want to take that packages into your code and start referring the functions which are available inside that particular packages then how to do that 
So when it comes to the .NET technology, there is something called NuGet Package Manager. So it is like a imagine like a big repository where all different types of repo packages will be there. Anybody can download the packages from there and install into their projects and start using it. So let me show you that. So if I go to the OneNote, you see that NuGet.org. That is a website where you can see all the NuGet packages actually. So if I go to the browser and let me try to open that website there. So let me type NuGet.org. So you can see that created .NET apps faster with NuGet. So this NuGet repository is especially for the .NET projects. Huge number of packages are available. You can see the count of the packages, versions of the packages here, right? There are huge. So let me try to oh, install some NuGet package manager and try to use it. So if I go to my OneNote, so in this case, I have installed something called case converter NuGet package manager. So let me search for case converter. Uh, what this will do, it will try to convert the case of the uh, string, whatever you give uh, into camel case, into snake case and all. So this is the case converter package manager. Let me open that. And you see there is a command which will allows you to install this package into your project. So you can copy this command and go back to your project in the Visual Studio code. And here in the terminal, paste that command. You see that .NET add package case converter version 2.0.1. When I run that under dependencies, right, right now there is no package added into my project. But when I run this command, it will add that camel case package from the NuGet package manager. So let me hit enter. You can see that package is getting installed here in the terminal. You can track the status. Great. It seems our package installed successfully. Now, if you see the solution explorer under packages, you see that case converter package, right? That means it got added automatically. So let me clear this terminal here. So let me hit the clear command. And now let's go back to our uh, code here. Uh, here, what I will do, whatever the name I have, right? I don't want to print that name as it is. Maybe I want to convert that case of that name. So what I will do, that name dot, I can use to camel case or something. You see this camel case converter or Pascal case converter or snake case converter. So all these converters came because of that case converter. If you observe the moment I added this function, it is adding this line of code where it says using case converter library or case converter package. So first step is we added the package. Then we are using this using statement to use that and start using it. So let's try to print this. Huh? So I'm converting it and then I will try to use this in the code. So console dot write line, whatever the name I enter and I will enter in a snake case. Okay, so let me remove this code. I don't want this code now. Okay, so let me save this. Now let me try to run this code using the dot net run command. And when I run that, as you expect, it will ask me to enter the name. So let me enter the name. And then when I print, it should print in a snake case. So I'm entering in a, sorry. So here I'm entering in a small case characters like Mahir Basha. And when I hit enter, if you observe the result, the snake case conversion happened and it added that underscore, right? So that means I am not doing anything. There is somebody written a code that will convert the case. I just taken that package from the package manager of NuGet package and we installed into our project and then we started using it using this using statement here and then start using your code here, right? So that's it in this video. I hope now you got an idea what is .NET, how to install .NET, how to get started with the .NET applications. And if you want to refer some packages which are outside, how to install them and do that. So with this idea, you can go ahead and start working as a .NET developer, try to explore more, try to build more and more on applications. You will get a great idea. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe the channel and hitting the like button. Thank you.